We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for October 11th, 2015. And today, th there's so much to cover, um, breaking news-wise, that I have to kind of pick and choose anymore what topics we focus in on. It's just not practical to do, you know, eight to ten part studies. Um, it, it just even on a bi-weekly basis, it's pretty tough to do just to keep going that long. So I'm trying to kind of zero in on some specific topics, some of the worst ones that we're, we're facing typically, and then um, <clears throat> covering the rest via the newsletters, the Christian newsletter, the health newsletters um, that we're putting out. It's just that Satan is moving at such a breakneck speed unless you have a dedicated daily audio show anymore there's just no way to even possibly keep up with everything uh, I, I, again i'm not i'm not complaining I'm, I'm very grateful for for the position you know that the lord's let me uh be in here um but uh i'm just trying to prioritize at this point what we can actually cover so the first report is entitled the apocalyptic doomsday vision of isis forces all christians to become muslims or die Launches global Armageddon as Islamic invasion of the West plays out before our very eyes. I know a nice little subtle lighthearted title there. Um, the story at Gatestone Institute International Policy Council today is called Migration Crisis. Islam will conquer Europe without firing a shot. And in it we learn how the failed policies of the EU and the US under Barack Obama have brought the Arab world to the brink of chaos. As the regimes they've helped to destroy are replaced by something far worse, a rapidly growing group of individuals who truly believe it is their destiny to bring America, Christians, and the entire uh, world to total destruction. We recently learned that ISIS has a plan that if they had it their way, uh, would kill 90% of all Americans by 2016, which is only next year. So if they had it their way, okay? Um, and, and again, the Lord Jesus Christ, still on the throne, ever seated next to God the Father Almighty, ever, ever making intercession for the saints. Uh, so understand this would be their plan if, you know, basically if if they were just allowed to do whatever they wanted and, and were able to have faith. Of course, Obama's doing every possible thing he can do to make that happen. And that is what we're really going to be looking at uh, in this particular study how the Obama administration is doing everything in its power to enable that to happen. Um, mass eradication of non-Muslim populations worldwide, but particularly, uh, I really do believe the, the main target would be Israel and America if, if, uh, if everything were to play out the way that they would want it to play out. Also, Europe, the European nations are already obviously doing that with their uh, what we've been reporting on. We'll, we'll be looking at that again today. So, <clears throat> the conservative Tribune recently told us of a chilling six-phase plan that ISIS would use to destroy America. A story out days ago from Paul McGuire is called The Babylon Code, Rise of the End Time World State. And in it we read, the world is at a final turning point, an unparalleled convergence of acceleration and end time signs is now occurring. These harbingers are geopolitical, economic, scientific, technological, cultural, and moral. We have reached the point in world history, long warned of in prophecy, with an all-out control, upside-down world that seems destined to soon explode in destruction. And as ISIS warns the west of Armageddon, mega-earthquakes and storms, the likes the world has never seen before. So, what we're seeing a lot too with ISIS is they're saying all of the cataclysmic, and, and Farrakhan's doing this as we'll see, they're saying all of the cataclysmic weather events that we're experiencing Farrakhan was going into the South Carolina flooding. You know, that's all judgment from Allah. And Allah is doing this to, to go before, ahead of time, to destroy the infidels, to prepare the way for the ISIS army so that they can... So all of this stuff, and then you have Obama over here doing everything he can possibly do in his power to fund them, to enable them, to train them, to make sure that, that they're, they're um, uh, shipping them in, busing them in, flying them in, however he can get them over here or into these other countries. They're giving them money to get into these European countries um, that they're invading. 
and they're, they're doing everything possible to make that happen. Um, because in the end, then ultimately they can say, oh, look, I mean, the, these guys, yeah, they set off a dirty nuke bomb, and, and yeah, they did this, and they did that, and they destroyed our power grids and, and, and poison our water supplies and, and killed and raped and stealed and pillaged their way their merry way to wherever and we we thought they were good guys and in in but you know hey what are you gonna do so now we're gonna have to give you our our order our new world order out of the chaos we're willingly funding and creating through isis which will be their scapegoat so that way they can come out smelling like a rose, or supposedly. Any, anybody, though, that, that's looked at this with any type of intelligent eye toward this will realize it is the exact opposite. And um, when they're burning in hell and then the lake of fire for eternity, people like Obama and, and these other devils and, and, um, and all, of the, all of the agony and misery and evil they have perpetuated, they're going to have to pay for that perpetually ultimately in the lake of fire for all eternity so that's what they have to look forward to so all of this evil they're literally just storing up as the bible says against themselves for the day of wrath let's go further so isis is warning the west of armageddon mega earthquake storms the likes the world has never seen before and as this brookings institution report lays out so perfectly and bluntly the world is in an unprecedented state of crisis. The story also asks succinctly, is this the end of civilization? Uh, obviously, it's not, okay? But, and again, the Bible says there will be, uh, Jesus Christ said this regarding the end times, Matthew 24, there will be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes, pestilences, you know, in diverse places, you know. So, there, there are going to be all of these wars and rumors of wars and all of this stuff going on, but but fear not for the end is not yet that type of thing. So pray that you'd be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are coming upon this earth and to stand before the son of man. That's what the Bible says in that passage of scripture. So that's something Christians should pray, you know, pray that you are, you are um, endured to the end and that you are more than overcomers through the Lord Jesus Christ. He's perfectly capable of equipping you no matter what we have facing us, no matter what situation that you're in. Okay, which I don't see those points emphasized enough in Christian alternative media. It's more typically all doom and gloom. And I try to interject a lot of scripture into what we're doing. Um, no matter how bleak the news may look on the surface, God is still in control. The Lord Jesus Christ is still in control. He created the universe. You can't top that. It's untoppable. And so, ultimately, Satan is literally carrying out God's plan in regard to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 the strong delusion that God said he is going to send to planet earth at this exact time the, the falling away of the church the apostasy of the church 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2 and then that wicked capital W the antichrist is going to be revealed we're seeing the falling away of the church everywhere you look. The wicked is on the cusp of being revealed. The, the tribulation is on the cusp of starting at some point in the near future. So these are all things we should be looking for that actually confirm scripture. That shouldn't um, cause us to despair, but actually give us hope seeing, wow, there's just one more of the thousands of confirmations of fulfilled prophecy that the Bible has already fulfilled and will keep fulfilling. In perfect succession in things like Daniel and the book of Revelation and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and these types of things. God will send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie, that they might all be damned, you know, who had no love for the truth, basically. So, um, anyway, and then, and again, that's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. So, Going forward, it says, in the first video from the Brookings Institute, they take a look at the ISIS apocalypse, including the history, strategy, doomsday vision of the Islamic State. Much more 
below video including an in-depth video on isis's plans to behead the pope and kill hundreds of millions of christians and americans as well as a video that takes a look at inside isis's territory and their promise in a nuclear tsunami now i'm not gonna play that one it's about a 56 minute long video but i do give you the link for it if you need to know more history um and again a lot of these things you may know but maybe your neighbors don't know them. Maybe your family doesn't know them. And, and, and sometimes this can be a tremendous icebreaker tool. Um, I've been putting out a lot of the chick tracks lately on, like, there's one called Camel in the Tent, the Camels in the Tent, and then Men of Peace, where it shows Islamic people. See, a lot of times people may not be um, receptive to the gospel at all. But if you can break the ice with an islamic based track and the worse this gets okay with islam the more receptive people are going to be i walked into my barber the other day and he was a real big duke fan i mean just i mean insane duke fan um you know and i walked in there and i said something about duke and um, i mean the duke blue devils i mean give me a break you know and then you have the wake force demon deacons even better it's good it's good w which one the blue devils or the demon deacons they're both puritanical obviously i mean come on what wonderful mascots anyway so he said and he didn't say anything when i said something about duke and i even forget what it was but he he said uh man he said i got rid of everything i have from duke now this is like a lifelong duke fan guy and i said oh really why what what happened he's like well that whole thing about how they were uh set up that muslim call to prayer and all that stuff on campus he said i that day he said i went in and i got rid of every single thing i had in my house every like you know decanter or, or like cooler or whatever he had he got rid of every he said i was in the other day and I, I missed one thing it was like a cooler he'd put way back in his freezer he, he got rid of it all and i don't even think they ended up going did they end up going through with that they they were doing it for a while but i think there was enough public outrage where they stopped it but that didn't matter to him the fact that they did it now I would consider them like probably along more like the typical kind of you know average i guess you would say 501c3 christian in america but what it did for me is it opened a door to say oh you think yeah i'm i'm with you on that see you you get into an agreement with somebody regarding a subject that you can have common ground on and then it opens the door for other things and so, um, and not like they haven't heard the gospel. I, I, I know they have. They play Christian music in there and, and, and that type of stuff. But it can be an, uh, an avenue for them to educate other people too. Because then I started getting into all the statistics about Islam. I just think Islam can be a tremendous uh, witnessing icebreaker tool that maybe wouldn't exist just if you were going to present somebody the flat out gospel now in the trick tracks obviously you get the gospel at the end it's all tied together it all commingles it together and i'm not saying chick's perfect okay i'm not i don't agree with them about everything that they have you know uh, biblical stances on but i do believe they're they're concerned about saving souls um and so uh when I go back in there next time, I'm going to, because I have them in my truck, I'm going to make sure I take them both those tracks and give them to them so that they see, you know, hey, this is what we're dealing with here. And, and this is how bad it actually, just in part how bad it is. But I got into a whole bunch of other stuff. Anyway, I just like, the, the, the one advantage I've seen about Islam as of late is that I do believe it, it affords a tremendous witnessing tool that might not exist in, in other avenues. Of witnessing and the worst things get in america and they're going to get worse unless god intervenes today if obama stays in power particularly it's going to get worse and it's probably going to get 
so much worse that we're not going to be able to comprehend it. That's what we're going to be talking about today. And I know I've hit the subject, of it, but it just keeps escalating. It just keeps getting worse. It keeps getting more in your face. There's more breaking news. So it's not like something I, I can't report on. You know, well, we reported on that, you know, a year ago. I'll just let that know. It's, it's so in your face what they're doing. Um, and again, Obama's doing everything on the planet to make sure that this Islamic global caliphate of Sharia law worldwide will ha I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm saying if he had his druthers, if he had his Islamic wishes, being a Muslim, being demon possessed, being a vessel of Satan, a fork tongued devil from the pit of hell, like Obama is, that's what he would want because then he could see the annihilation of all the Christians who he hates with a passion done under this Islamic caliphate. That would be Obama's wish if he could pull that off. We need to pray that he's not able to pull it off, that his wicked actions are defeated, that God hedge his and all his devil ilk, that he hedged their way up with thorns, as the Bible says, that he makes their past slippery, that into the very pit they have dug for you know, tons of innocent people, women and children, Included in widows and orphans and in all of and all of the all of the Christians, whether they're whether I understand a lot of them are not real Christians in the Middle East. It still doesn't mean I don't want them to be delivered and in in and saved and, and hopefully get saved. You know, whether they're Izidis or, or Catholics or whatever, you know, all of the atrocities that are being committed in the Middle East against these people it, it, it doesn't matter to isis they consider them all christians basically any anybody that's particularly as any kind of christian bent isis lumps them all into the same boat they all get the same beheading they all get the same child rape they all get the same sex enslavement by the women they're no respecter of persons so these devils need to be annihilated I pray to God if it be possible, their souls be saved. But if they're allowed to continue on the path that they're going on, they would kill every single man, woman, and child that they would consider an infidel. And they would do, leading up to that point, there would be massive amounts of torture, sexual abuse, rape, killing, stealing, pillaging. Leading up to that. So, we do need God's intervention re regarding this, this matter. Um, because uh, they're wicked. They are pure evil. They are the full, they are the highest embodiment of evil on planet Earth in mass of any group on the planet. Any group. You could say, well, yeah, but Satan, Satanists are more, yeah, but there's not, they don't have the masses like Islam does. Islam is doing more evil wicked damage all under the name of religion than any other group on the planet and yes i understand the new world order is is, is encouraging this and, and they're using them in, in this regard and then ultimately they'll be able to use them as the scapegoat i i get that okay but the fact remains they are doing it and we need to pray for god's intervention for this wickedness to stop but God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongues to fall upon themselves. And all men shall flee away and shall fear and shall declare the work of God. For they shall wisely consider of his doing. And the righteous shall be glad in the Lord trust in him. And all the upright heart shall glory according to Psalm 64. When God's judgment falls upon the wicked, good things always happen. To a certain extent, there's always repentance, sometimes on a mass scale. People get saved. People get right with God. The fear of God falls on people. See, if ISIS is allowed to get along with this, they, they think, well, the God of the Christians, he doesn't have any power at all. It's Allah that's giving us all this favor that we're getting. And I'm going to get into the whole thing that Putin's, how he's over there annihilating them because you have to look at that with a balanced approach as well you know um about getting that a little bit later so let's go forward here um okay so in the next video we'll see german author frederick 
Totenhofer inside ISIS is what's inside ISIS's territory. And here are the warning straight from ISIS's lips. They will conquer Europe. Now, again, this is what they're saying. It's not a matter of if, but when, telling us that they will kill hundreds of millions of up to 500 million or more. These are the people they're letting in in mass. They're not letting the Christians in. They're only letting fighting age Muslim men in. With no women and hardly any children are with them. So that they can go in there and rape and steal and kill and pillage. And, and all the women that aren't wearing certain whatever are all fair game. They've given them money to actually get in to these countries. I got into it last week. The week I mean, I've got into this over and over. They're absolute total stinking demon possessed savages all kind of eyewitness accounts of this and the government's just being told to stand down and don't you say a word against them because they're sent of the lord god as merkel just said angela merkel said they're they're all sent of the lord god yeah your lord god merkel is satan you're right satan did send them i agree with you on that you just need to elaborate what lord god you're in reference to because it's obvious who you are. So let me clarify that point. So yeah, they're telling us they'll kill hundreds of millions of up to 500 million or more. We hear ISIS plans the biggest religious holocaust in history of the world. That's how they're going to reward these countries for taking them in. The biggest religious holocaust. And it doesn't matter if, if you're an atheist or if you have no religion whatsoever. It wouldn't matter. You're either going to become a Muslim, you're either going to convert, so you're going to have to find religion one way or another. <laughs> you're, you'll find religion in hell, but it'll be too late if you plunge into hell. You say, well, no, 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 okay, whatever, no, I mean, who, who are you going to die for if, if you're an atheist? I guess nobody. I mean, I imagine you'd be ripe for the conversion because, you know. You probably cave in pretty pretty easy if, if somebody was an atheist. I'm not talking to my listeners, but I'm just saying in general, that would be the case. But that's not going to matter to them. They are going, it's either convert or die. This is what they're talking about. There's no in between. There's no gray area. This is Islam practiced in its most fundamental, purest form. What ISIS is doing is exactly what the Quran and the other unholy writings of Islam tell them to do. That's exactly what they tell them to do. So they're just being fundamental to their devil death cult. They're being the most fundamental. Moderate Muslims, they'll be killed. They'll either be told, well, you better get with the program, you lukewarm infidel, and support us or we will kill you so even the moderate muslims are going to have to get on board and a lot of the moderate muslims aren't moderate they love this they just act that way why because they've been the trojan horse beachhead force sent in to prepare the way to house to protect and to fund the more radical elements that they are bringing into the u.s and into europe they got to export this tyranny some way. Satan has to pull it off some way. This is the best way that Satan can use to pretty much destabilize the world and then ultimately point at ISIS and say, well, we didn't know they were going to be bad like that. Oh, they have no history of that at all. They're just killing, raping, stealing, pillaging all the Christians and all the people in Africa and the Middle East and wherever they get their slimy tentacles in on a daily basis. They commit more atrocities on a daily basis than any other group. It's not like they don't have a history, you know, a daily ongoing minute by minute history. So, um, we hear that ISIS plays the biggest religious Holocaust in the history of the world. And as shared in the second video below, if they can't turn you into a Muslim, they'll try their very best to kill us Christians, every single last one of us. So let's go ahead and listen to this. These are just, I'm going to be playing a lot of short videos today. It's an extremely rare glimpse into the inner workings of the most dangerous terrorist organization in the world. German author Jürgen Todenhofer managed to visit ISIS territory both in Iraq and in Syria. They are only 1%. It's a 1% movement in the Islamic world. But this 1% movement has 
the power of a nuclear... I, I, don't, I don't buy into that. I don't buy into it. ISIS is the most fundamental faction of Islam. 1%, I don't buy it. There's a lot of people that would align themselves with ISIS if the truth be known. Look at Iran. Chaining death to America and, and, and wanting to establish a Muslim caliphate. You can't tell me 1% of the people there aren't cheering on a certain aspect of what ISIS is doing. I don't buy into that at all. The tsunami. It's incredible. I, I, I was so amazed. I was, I was, I, I, I couldn't understand this enthusiasm. Totenhofer spent several days in Mosul, Iraq's second biggest city, conquered by ISIS in June. He even visited the mosque where ISIS head Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi gave a speech earlier this year. He also met with child soldiers. How old are you? I am 13. Totenhofer even managed to get access to a Kurdish prisoner in the hands of the extremists. What did they tell you? What will happen to you? Our captor said that we have Islamic State fighters imprisoned with the Kurdish regional government. You are prisoners here and we will trade you back for our fighters. They didn't say they will kill or slaughter. Tudnova says people living in ISIS-controlled areas are in fear of the harsh penalties for infringement of the stringent laws. But there's also a sense of order and stability. According to Tordenhofa, fighters say they often manage to defeat much larger armies, like the Iraqi military, because they're not afraid to die. It took you how many days to conquer Mosul? Yeah, but, but look at what's happened just with, with uh, Russia this last week. They went in there and bunker busted their, their locations in Syria and, I mean, took a massive amount of, of these compounds in like a 24 to 48 to 72 hour period. They're, they're, they're so not invincible, okay? Um, but when, you know, on a level playing field fighting other people in the Middle East, you know, they, they can claim all this, we had all this favor. Four days. We didn't kill 24, but we killed a score of them. So they got terrified and ran away. We don't retreat. We only fight, and God Almighty. Yeah, that's not what the reports coming out of out of Syria that they don't retreat. I, the, there's a lot of reports saying that they're retreating like crazy, that they're abandoning their posts, that they're fleeing like you know you wouldn't believe. He will victor us. Those have reverted from Islam do not have a solid ideology, so they ran away. They came to fight for the tyrant fight for money. Oh, yeah. During battle, he learned, many of the ISIS fighters wear suicide vests, willing to blow themselves up rather than be captured. In one interview, a senior ISIS fighter warns the U.S. and Europe. We will conquer Europe someday. It's not a question of us wanting. We will. We'll kill 150 million, 200 million, 500 million. We don't care about the number. Atrocities ISIS has already committed suggest they're serious about their threats. This German author's visit to the Islamic State shows a brutal, merciless group, but also one that won't go away anytime soon. Fred Pleitkin, CNN, Munich, Germany. Well, won't go anytime soon if, if the world government enables them and somebody like Russia doesn't do anything to, to you know, go after them. But they're... they're um, if the truth be known, this is a group that is easily defeated with, with the right type of strategic military attack. You know, they're savages. They, they, they don't have the, 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 the brains in their head to, you know, coordinate something like a, a country like Russia. Or they, they, they just don't have, they're, they're savages. Look at the Middle East. I mean, you know, you see how these people live. And how they operate in all of the the wherever they are the 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 um the countries. If you just look at these countries, I mean they're they're in typically in chaos. There's so much typically uh, poverty and 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 infighting, and you know they can't even get along with themselves. So. Going further, Robert Spencer of Jihad Watch is the author of The Complete Infidel's Guide to ISIS and the newly released uh, next video below. Spencer sends out a very, very loud and very clear warning to all Christians. ISIS has plans to convert all to Islam 
or they will kill us. Telling us ISIS's long-term goals of beheading the Pope in Rome on live TV. Wow, that's, that's pretty lofty. Um, for the entire world to see. And launching the biggest religious holocaust in the world's history. That will lead to hundreds of millions of deaths of Christians around the world. It seems like they're, they're focused in on Christians a lot. I wonder if that would have anything to do with all the devils and demons that possess them. Why they would want to have a special emphasis on Israel and the Christians. Huh, I, you know, it's, it's, I guess it's just a big coincidence. Um, and the video is a must-see for anyone who still believes we are witnessing anything but an Islamic invasion before our very eyes that the jihadis promise will lead to armageddon and the return of the muslim imam mahdi or the 13th imam which i've reported on many times it's their awaited savior okay um three days ago a p published a story in which we warned you of isis's plans for a nuclear tsunami tsunami for humanity them bringing like a dirty nuke over the the border of texas smuggling it into america and setting one or more of those off uh like a dirty bomb which would obviously put us in a martial law the first moment that happened basically and then give the the globalists and people like the obama administration all the excuse they need in the world to impose martial law and to take away all of our liberties and to uh initiate gun confiscation and, and who knows what else maybe tie that in with a pandemic so they could say oh it's time to get force vaccinated as well you know I, i'm just saying if they're after maximum shock and awe, maximum order out of chaos. They would want to try to implement this stuff in succession or all at once, where you're having a lot of this stuff going at the same time. Um, going forward here, uh, we warn you, ISIS is playing for a nuclear tsunami. Uh, a mainstream student website recently decreed that the Mahdi would appear, their Imam Mahdi, in 2015 or 2016 to conquer the world for islam so they're expecting the mahdi to come in the next year sometime in the next year in this video we learn that they also believe jesus will return with the mahdi but for a much different reason than the christians believe according to islam jesus will return to quote break the cross and convert the world's christians to islam See, they believe Jesus is coming back with, with the Mahdi. Their version of Jesus. And it's going to be an Islamic Jesus. Um, most likely this ascended Master Jesus that I've reported on so many times. The Sanand Emmanuel or Master Jesus. Um, how that's all going to play out, I don't know. But I can tell you that we are in for the greatest end time delusion and deception that the world has ever seen and this is the strong delusion of second thessalonians chapter 2 that god said he was going to send so it's very important for us to have a love of truth no matter how hard or how horrible the truth may be so that we're not sent the strong delusion according to that bible verse so um and to pray for discernment pray for wisdom Pray for understanding. Pray for knowledge. Now, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. That's what the Bible says. So, if you pray for the fear of the Lord, you're also in, in subsequently praying for knowledge, for, for understanding, for wisdom, for protection, for deliverance. So I'm, I'm trying to commingle a lot of what the Bible says with this so that it's not all doom and gloom. Because if I just present their side of the story, which is all you typically ever see on alternative media, it's like, well, we got no hope. We might as well just throw up our hands, curl up in a fetal position, you know, and, and wait for the inevitable. Well, that's not what God's called us to. So, um, yeah, this is their, this is their Islamic version of jesus and again how that's all going to play out i can't say for sure i don't know i've given you a lot of different scenarios so that if one particular scenario over the years i have if one particular scenario does happen then hopefully you've at least heard that or you you're, you're aware of the deception so warning us about the number of very strange things that are now happening in europe with countless thousands of refugees moving into the continent spencer asked in the video why all of these refugees are Muslims when over a million Christians were displaced in Syria? 
again, there's no Christians coming in, okay, to these, it's all savages, basically, from eyewitness accounts that we've went over. Savages that have been given money to, and, and all of the, the uh, credentials they need to move through these countries or to stay in these countries, and, uh, and again, we got into that guy from, from the United Nations, I think it was Peter Sutherland, who's, a, who's most likely responsible for that, the Dave Hodges article I talked about last time, where they're actually being given the funds in order to do this. These terrorist, savage Muslim hordes. I mean, it's just so beyond evil and satanic, so in your face. Um... He also asks us where these refugee, refugees are, each getting the thousand dollars, thousand euros that is being required of them to enter into the European Union. Do you know how much money for as many people as they're, they've all got the money? I mean, they're trying to give them food and water and they're just throwing it back and we don't even want it. Ah, it's It's insane. Spencer concludes that the countless members of this European invasion are agents of ISIS and will be used to force Europeans to submit to Islamic law. While that may seem far-fetched to some, all need to all we need to do is look at what is happening elsewhere as Germany becomes absurdistan, <laughs> meaning it's absurd what's going on there, descending into total chaos. More uh, below in this video, so we'll go ahead and roll this video. ISIS thinks that Rome is one of its primary goals and that it is in its timetable. It has a timetable wherein, in the next 10 years, by the year 2025, it hopes to bring about Armageddon, the final struggle between good and evil, or between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. And that uh, one of the chief stepping stones to that Armageddon battle is the conquest of Rome, which they think they're going to, have, they're going to be able to do within the next five years, that is by 2020. For Westerners, Rome is just one of a handful of major capitals. What, what do they see in Rome? What the Islamic State thinks of Rome is that it is the center of Christianity. Now, obviously, this is something that is influenced by the Roman Catholic Church being there, and a lot of other Christians would say, no, Rome is not the center of Christianity. But this is the symbolic value of Rome for them. They think that the conquest of Rome will be the complete sign of Islam's superiority over Christianity and defeat of Christianity. Could you talk a little bit about the timeline of Muslim eschatology and where Rome fits into that? Muhammad prophesied, or Muhammad is supposed to have prophesied, according to a tradition that, is, uh, that arose in Islam actually a couple hundred years after Muhammad's death, but is still widely believed, that Muhammad is supposed to have said that first Muslims will conquer the new Rome and then the old Rome. The new Rome is Constantinople, and of course the Muslims did conquer Constantinople in the year 1453, but they never did conquer Rome in Italy. And now there are many Islamic clerics, not just in ISIS, who say now the time is nigh for the rest of that prophecy to be fulfilled and for the Muslims to conquer Rome. And so this is something that the Islamic State has put on its specific agenda for the next few years. They're going to bring that about. But you're saying outside of Islamic State, are they calling for or they're, are they just foretelling uh, the invasion of Rome? These, these, these uh, preachers outside of Islamic State? Both. Uh, Sheikh Yusuf al-Qaradawi, who's probably the most uh, influential and popular Muslim sheikh in the world, he has a, he's a TV preacher, actually, and he has a show on Al Jazeera. And he uh, has said that now is the time that the Muslims are going to conquer Rome. He states it as if it's just an established fact that's going to happen, and that he thinks it's going to happen actually through a massive influx of immigrants. And that's just exactly what we're seeing in Europe today. Then there are other preachers who are actively calling upon Muslims to conquer Rome and saying that the time is nigh now with so many immigrants in Europe and the European countries being so weak and supine. Where does the return of the Mahdi come in relation to Rome? It is in relation to the conquest of Rome in the sense that uh, once Rome is conquered in this view, within the next five years, and then Israel will follow shortly after. They also believe that in, during this time period, they're going to conquer Saudi Arabia and Iran. Now, all this might seem wildly fanciful, that this terror organization is going to be able to do that, but you understand they're not talking about doing it by conventional armies. 
they're talking about doing it by overwhelming these lands with sympathizers from within and an influx of other people from outside. And that's something that we see happening right now in Europe. And so it's really not all that far outside the realm of possibility that they could at least make these attempts. And they think that once this battle takes place at Dabik, this final battle, which they see coming in by 10 years from now, in 2025, that the Muslims will battle the non-Muslims in this town in northern Syria. And then Jesus, the Muslim prophet, and the Mahdi will return to the earth and they will together conquer and Islamize the world. There's another prophecy attributed to Muhammad in which he says that Jesus will return and will break the cross, kill the pig, and abolish the jizya. Break the cross means destroy Christianity, which is supposed to be a perversion of Jesus' real teachings. Kill the pig because the Christians should be following the food laws, forbidding the eating of pork, and they don't. And abolish the jizya, the jizya being the tax that the Christians have to pay in tribute and a sign of their subjugation to the Islamic rulers. There will be no more jizya because there will be no more Christians in subjugation to the Islamic rulers. All the Christians at that point will be killed or converted to Islam. Do they have a plan for the Pope? They do. They plan to behead the Pope publicly and make it a spectacle the way the videos of Jihadi John beheading various hostages were uh, a, an international sensation and a cause of international horror. The objective is, in the words of the Quran, to strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of Allah. And there was a Polish convert to Islam recently who uh, has joined the Islamic State, and he said, once we take Rome, we're going to carry out mass beheadings in St. Peter's Square. And so uh, this is the plan, to, to convert uh, St. Peter's Square into a huge site of executions of people considered to be the enemies of Allah, chief among them the Pope, in order to uh, cow and frighten the rest of the world into submitting to their rule. As you said, their plan is not a, a traditional military invasion of Europe, but almost like a Viet Cong style uh, uprising among their infiltrators in Europe. We now see this massive influx of refugees into Europe. Now, there are a lot of very strange aspects to this refugee influx. In the first place, the refugees are all Muslims. And yet, it, there were tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, over a million Christians displaced by this, the, the various conflicts in the Middle East. None of the Christians, however, are trying to get into Europe. It's only Muslims. Now, that's one strange thing. Then NPR reported just recently that each one of these refugees pays 1,000 euros for the transport into Europe. Where are they getting all this money if their whole lives have been disrupted and they can't work and they can't stay in their homes? Who is paying for this? There is another thing, too. The Islamic State has said that we're going to flood Europe with refugees. And just yesterday, several Islamic State jihadis were found among the refugees, and I'm sure there will be many more. And so this indicates that they are using this refugee influx to get jihad terrorists into Europe. Maybe they're, they're the ones paying for it as well, since they are the wealthiest terror group in the world. And once these men are there, then they're going to disrupt the societies in which they're, they have been welcomed as refugees and try to work out these, the ISIS agenda of subverting these societies and ultimately destroying them and making them submit to Islamic law. Okay, so I think that gentleman gave a very good synopsis of what um, we could be facing uh, in the in the uh, near future if ISIS is able to do what they're planning on doing. Um, also, prayer points for us to pray against, <laughs> obviously. So, we learned back on September 13th that 15 U.S. intel chiefs had recently revolted against Obama on ISIS intelligence, and according to one Pentagon official, Obama is lying about ISIS to us all. RT told us in May that ISIS was attempting to get nuclear weapons from Pakistan. Well, a June story from Newsmax told, the U, uh, told us of ISIS plans of smuggling a nuclear weapon across our completely open southern border. Meanwhile, the state of Texas shows once again that they're way ahead of the curve, drafting a bill to halt the Muslim invasion being pushed by Barack Obama in the United Nations. Um, <clears throat> if Robert Spencer's book and warnings of ISIS intentions are correct, we are quickly running out of time to eradicate this total threat to liberty and humanity as they close in on their apocalyptic, apocalyptic visions 
And in the final video below, um, Secular Talk asks why the Obama administration has dumbed down ISIS intelligence as they race way towards their perceived destiny, the total annihilation of the human race. So let's go ahead and play this uh, short video. The Daily Beast has a huge story out today about how government officials have manipulated the intelligence on ISIS. They report, quote, senior intelligence officials of the U.S. military central command demanded significant alterations to analyst reports that question whether airstrikes against ISIS were damaging the group's finances and its ability to launch attacks. But reports that showed the group being weakened by the U.S.-led air campaign received comparatively little scrutiny. All right, so let's pause here for a second and just acknowledge that this is, in many ways, this is standard operating procedure. Whatever intelligence you have that backs your narrative, give that to all the different media outlets. Whatever you have that contradicts your narrative and your policy ideas, hide it. See, this is one of the main problems with government secrecy. This is why you need transparency in what's supposed to be a democracy. They continue, senior CENTCOM intelligence officials who reviewed the critical reports sent them back to the analysts and ordered them to write new versions that included more footnotes and details to support their assessments. According to two officials familiar with a complaint levied by more than 50 analysts about intelligence manipulation by CENTCOM higher-ups. So there's 50 intelligence officials who are like, yeah, they sent the report back to us and said, we don't like it. Change it. Change it to back our narrative. Say what we're doing is working. That's ridiculous. This is like propaganda 101. They say, in some cases, analysts were also urged, uh, urged to state that killing particular ISIS leaders and key officials would diminish the group and lead to its collapse. The intelligence pros said killing certain ISIS leaders might not diminish the group and that airstrikes might not be working. The bosses didn't like those answers. Not at all. So, you know what comes to mind when I read that? The same story we just did about the drug war. About how U.S. policy for the longest time has been kill the leader and then everything else crumbles. But what actually happened when we kill the leaders? Mega cartels pop up in the place of the former cartels. People who are more vicious, more over the top, and kill more people pop up. And that's not just opinion, that is empirically what happened. We've covered the mega cartels many times now on the show. So that strategy, bottom line, doesn't work. And it also clearly does not work in the war on terror. That's what the intelligence analysts are telling us. But the idiots in Washington and the executive branch are like, yeah, we don't care. We're going to say that this works anyway, and we're just going to continue with this. So either they're stupid or there's ulterior motives. And I think it's probably a mix of both, where they say, no, this has to be the right answer because this is what we're supposed to do. But then also, I think they probably, on some level, care about their donors, care about the military-industrial complex, care about continuing to, you know, do airstrikes and sell more weapons to different people who we consider our allies in the region, and you name it. you got to keep the system going here. So this is a horrendous report, and also, might I add, that in Iraq and Syria, we've conducted 6,863 airstrikes. And we have no clue if they're working now. So I've even reported on previous things that came out of the administration. Again, though, this is propaganda, what they're telling us they're doing and this and that. We're, we're, we've, we've created ISIS, we've helped to create them, fund them, arm them, protect them. The Obama administration has done this. We've proven this over and over again. But they'll, they'll come out with their, their news or, oh, we're making bad you know, progress and all of this other garbage. It's all lies. It, it is all total lies. Frustration where they said, yeah, you know, we killed uh, at least 10,000 ISIS guys. Now, there were other reports that came later that said, well, those fighters have been replenished almost immediately. So you're just kind of treading water here and keeping the number about the same. But now with this new report, I have no idea what to believe anymore. I don't know if we're, we still have roughly about 30,000 ISIS members like we're told. I have no idea now if the Kurds are right when they've said it's actually north of like 200,000 people. I don't know what to believe anymore because it's clear that the people in Washington are just lying. They'll, they tell the intelligence officials, shut up with the stuff that disagrees with us and just go with our narrative. So I don't know what to believe, but here's what I know for sure. Our strategy is not working. Now, I get it. As I've said before, if... The but again, it, it's not a strategy. 
uh, he, he's giving them too much credit. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a, our strategy is to keep them protected. Our strategy is to help them, to enable them to do what they're doing, just like we've done with all of these other governments in the Middle East, to topple those, the ones that had, uh, a lot of them had Muslim dictators, but they were kind of more along the sides of moderate Muslim dictators, and install a more radicalized version that will carry out this Islamic caliphate to annihilate, kill, steal, and destroy all the Christians, which is what is very, very important to Satan. What better tool to use than ISIS? International community or other governments want to do specific airstrikes against ISIS. I get it. ISIS needs to be... Somebody needs to fight them. That needs to be done. But what we've demonstrated is that we suck at this, man. And this isn't just with ISIS in Iraq and Syria right now. This is with the previous Iraq war under George W. Bush. And with almost all the interventions we've done in the Middle East for the past decade. We're terribly incompetent where we kill the wrong people... We end up increasing recruitment for all these groups. So, uh, again, I, I think he's, I think he, he made some good points, but he's really not seen the big picture where this is all about what we're doing through these groups, what we're enabling them to do. Okay, so he's giving them way too much credit. So, uh, and then the next report we have, I'm going to try to get this uh, out here before there are timings um final betrayal something huge just happened but is it too late say goodbye to america hardcore conservatives are patting themselves on the back for ousting speaker of the house john boehner who recently decided to resign from his position at the end of october but did the big win for conservatives come too late will one of boehner's last acts last deals last capitula capitulations seal our fate <clears throat> in september and oh no, i'm sorry on saturday Stephen Stanford highlighted a number of events where the elite appear to have ver have had very public meltdowns, one of which was John Boehner's, but recently reports show that Boehner may have cut a backroom deal with minority leader Na uh, Nancy Pelosi to fund the Obama administration for the rest of, his, of its tenure and to fund Obamacare and to fund executive amnesty and to fund Planned Parenthood, to fund implementation of this Iran deal as well. In what is being referred to as the final betrayal. Well, that wouldn't surprise me one bit if, if, if this devil Boehner did all of that. Boehner resigned because he knew that after he cut that deal, conservatives in his own party. I, but again, to me, they're all on the same team. They're all, they're all moving in that direction. The, the Republican Party is spineless for the most part. So I don't even, I'm not going to give them that much credit. But the, his own party would be so furious with him. Oh, well, that's the narrative they can paint at least. Blame it on Boehner now. He's the scapegoat, you know. Um, would be so furious with him that it would make challenges to his speakership a certainty, sources say. Even if he survived those challenges, his remaining year and three months in office would become contentious and personally uncomfortable for him. While many consider Boehner's resignation as just politics, as well as the deal with Iran, Planned Parenthood funding, Obamacare, and the executive amnesty capitulation, there may just be one item that seals the fate of america and that's what this is about it says say goodbye to the constitution hello sharia law in april 2015 one news now article and all of this stuff is linked highlighted that you can click on it and actually go to the report that we're talking about obama's uh november 21st 2014 presidential memorandum is highlighted where obama declared his strategy to push through his executive order that would grant amnesty to more than 5 million illegal immigrants and child migrants. In order to accommodate them, he put together the task force. In addition, the Obama administration is accepting 70,000 foreign refugees annually from Somalia, Iraq, Syria, Burma, Bhutan, and other terrorist harboring Islamic nations. According to the New York Times, that number has now been increased to accepting 100,000 of these potential terrorists worldwide each year by 2017. And that's just the ones we know of. I believe there's a lot that we don't even know anything about. We're going to be talking more about that later. We already know that there is at least 190 U.S. locations that were secretly selected to accept these refugees. I believe the sanctuary cities or whatever. List of locations embedded in the linked article so you can see those here um, in the link as we know that isis terrorists and others 
have infiltrated the refugees' populations in order to seed themselves across the West. Before that list of 190 locations, we were warned by a whistleblower who was on a White House conference call, there's a link to that report as well, that specific mention of teaching illegals how to, quote, navigate and not assimilate, and that certain communities would be designated receiving communities that would which would, of course, have taxpayer funds pumped into them that would then morph into emerging immigrant communities. So they're going to have specific areas where they're all going to come in. They're going to be harbored. They're going to be protected. They're going to have a whole bunch of our taxpayer money behind them so that they cannot assimilate, but that they're there as a beachhead until they're given the green light, essentially, to whenever this jihadi holy war unholy islamic war goes hot and they'll all they'll, they'll already have their troops pre-positioned okay so uh via that amp article from march 2015 that's linked it says Payne goes on to reveal that immigrants were described as seedlings that needed fertile soil to in order to grow as she asserts they would continue to grow until they took over the host like a like a virus or like a parasite would take over its host and came then came out of the shadows as a as natural born and legal citizens oh as natural born and legal citizens were then pushed into the shadows well that would mean what that really means is as they were annihilated as they were murdered they're not going to be pushed into the shadows they're either going to convert or die if they even give you that choice to convert you know, I don't, I don't believe that's always going to be even the case. For those that deny that we are seeing the implementation by Obama of a long-term plan to destroy America and replace the U.S. Constitution with Sharia and call those that point it out as conspiracy theorists, all one has to do is research their previously stated goals. <clears throat> uh, via WorldNet Daily uh, report entitled, Poll, Most U.S. Muslims Would Trade the Constitution for Sharia, according to a local Newspaper report, Omar Ahmad, a founder, the founder of CARE, the Islamic terroristic American organization, told a conference hall packed with California Muslims in July, of, this is 1998, I mean, this is a long time ago, that Islam isn't in America to be equal with any other faith, but to become dominant. It's what, that's, but that's their creed everywhere they go. That's what the Quran says. The reporter paraphrased Ahmad, saying the Quran should be the highest authority in America, and Islam the only accepted religion on earth. Because they're so peace-loving and tolerant. That's why. On April 4th, 1993, Hooper, and this is 1993, Hooper reported, told a reporter for the Minnesota Star Tribune, I wouldn't want to create the impression that I wouldn't like the government of the United States to be Islamic sometime in the future, because he does. Hooper appeared on Michael Medivh's uh, radio show in October 2003 and stated, quote, if Muslims ever become a majority in the United States, it would be safe to assume that they would want to replace the U.S. Constitution with, with Islamic law. And, and, and other, what do they need for that? They need numbers. That's what we're seeing now. That's what Obama's doing at a breakneck speed. He's trying to create enough numbers of Muslims in order to make this happen. And if they were able to come in here and, and you know, bring us to a third world status through dirty nukes, poisoning our water supplies, um, taking down the electrical grid, and, and killing a whole bunch of, of, of indigenous Americans off, then that number scale would start to tip even quicker in their favor. Okay? Um, I think that's the plan. Uh, so they, w they would want to replace the U.S. Constitution with Islamic law, as most Muslims believe that God's law is superior to man-made. So, in other words, Allah is, God, is God's law in their eyes. Uh, there are now an estimated 3 million Muslims residing in the U.S. as citizens or with permanent legal status. 3 million already here. And more than 250,000 new Muslim residents enter the U.S. per year as, quote, refugees. On work visas and student-based visas, according to the Center for Immigration Studies, a poll commissioned in there—they're they're doing everything they can do to bring in every type of illegal uh, alien, 
whether they're Muslim, whether they're Mexican, whether they're Central American, but really the ones that are they're going to get the most bang for the satanic buck are obviously going to be the Muslims, which want to see us all dead and killed. Most of the ones coming from Central America and Mexico don't have that same bloodlust and religious ideology where they would want to kill every single American and behead them and, and you know, sexually abuse every, you know, the uh, women and children like the Muslims do. Uh, <clears throat> so going further, a poll commissioned by Security for Center Policy showed uh, 51% of American Muslims prefer that they should have their own Sharia course. I don't believe that at all. I believe it's way higher than that. I think they're just saying that to be politically correct. But but of the ones that did admit it, 51% did admit it. And nearly a quarter believe the use of violent jihad was justified in establishing Sharia law in America. There's the ones that are already in America believe that. But again, I don't I don't trust them anyway because they're Islam and the the Quran says it's Allah was the best of all deceivers. And if Allah was the best of all deceivers, then, then, then they themselves should be the best and cunning deceivers to the infidels so that they can establish this caliphate, ultimately. Uh, so that would translate into over 1.5 million Muslims living in the United States who believe that Sharia is the, Muslim, is the Muslim God, Allah's law that Muslims must follow and oppose worldwide by jihad. Um, so obviously is Sharia law compatible with the U S constitution? Obviously no. Many have addressed this issue. An excellent example of the differences can be found here with an item by item listing. There's links to all of this. Uh, if this was not a real concern, then why has there been the need in more than two dozen U S states to consider measures intended to restrict judges from consulting Sharia laws, uh, Arizona, Kansas, Louisiana, South Dakota, Tennessee, North Carolina, Alabama have banned Sharia past foreign law bans. In 2010 2011, more than two dozen states considered measures to restrict judges from consulting Sharia or foreign and religious laws more generally. So this is already getting into our court systems, is, is what they're saying here. There's always there's a push. As of 2013, all but 16 states have considered such a law. Sharia Compliance is already here in America. For those unaware, Sharia compliance uh, has already been implemented in certain areas, as evidenced by Seattle. Uh, this guy in Seattle, they have, this is unbelievable, was Seattle's Democratic Mayor Ed Murray was so concerned that Muslims and other residents weren't buying enough homes in the city that he had a committee investigate on how that could be rectified. One of the committee's recommendations were banks need to offer Sharia compliant mortgage loans for Seattle's growing Muslim community. You know, wonderful members of the community there. Muslims are forbidden by the religious law from paying interest on loans. So they must be offered loans structured in such a way that interest is not part of the package. Now, what bank in their right mind would offer a loan without interest? What incentive is there to even do the loan? Well, when Satan is your master, though, and he's saying, listen, I, I, whatever, they're going to offer them interest-free loans. Now, what law-abiding American even has that advantage? None. But they will because they're Muslims. The 28-member committee, the city, um, recommended the city convene leaders and community leaders to explore options for increasing access to Sharia-compliant loans. What an abomination. We will work to develop new tools for Muslims who are prevented from using conventional mortgage products due to their, their, their religious beliefs. I mean, this is such an abomination. The bottom line is is if John Boehner has cut a backroom deal with Pelosi, funding executive amnesty, then it would indeed be the final betrayal against the nation and the populace. I don't know about the final, but it's one of them. We can all say goodbye to the U.S. Constitution and all rights guaranteed to us within it, and hello to Sharia law. Um, I have to end part one here. I'm totally out of time. God bless you, and see you in part two. Scott Johnson's 1,000 plus audio teachings and PDF documents are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H dot com. In addition, we also offer a free Christian current event and health email newsletter. You can sign up at contendingfortruth.com. These email newsletters typically only generate about three to six emails per month if you subscribe to both lists. 
Please prayerfully help us to continue this work. For mail correspondence or to support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2359 Highway 70 Southeast, number 321, Hickory, NC 28602. Or on the internet, a PayPal donation link can be found at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.